Hello, welcome, a merry few, I hope you're alright, and you can all hear me, nice and clear, today, I was about to say Monday the 23rd of March, but I feel like saying today, day one of the new era, day one after the event. You do lose count. Yeah, I, yeah. It's all merging into one big lump. Well, 
I hope you're well. I've, I promise myself, he says getting tangled there, I promise myself I'd try to be upbeat and optimistic after if you're living in the UK, I guess we had it coming, but when it's sort of announced in that official way that it has been announced, we're on official, we've all been very naughty boys and uh, we're on proper lockdown now. And uh, it kind of hits, it, it kind of hits home, but... The beauty is we're all um, we all play video games, and uh, I think <laughs> there's never been a better a better era for video game players. What else are you going to do? You can socialise with all your friends online. Exactly, he's not coming out. We've all been win <laughs> collectively. We're not coming out. We've all been a very naughty boy. Exactly. Yeah, we can. Um, play video games but enough of that come on I need to do my proper introduction it wouldn't be the same welcome to everybody who's here I really appreciate it I know we don't get loads of viewers live and I may contemplate even bringing it to 10 p.m. I was trying to embrace our American cousins a bit so get the balance right but let me know what you think anyway here is the official opening of the show as I like to do it normally so Welcome, welcome to the Stadia Monday Night Chat. I'm Clive Illenden. I'm your host for tonight as we take a gondola ride down the glistening canals of Stadia City. And uh, we are in strange times. Hello there, Resurrector. How are you? Eon One, Stadia Rocks, of course. Always a pleasure to uh, see in the chat the Radio 4 voice of Stadia. Uh, Michael John... Uh, rigorousness, rigorousness, must teach me how to say that one day. And David Handley, how lovely of all of you to be here in the chat um, as I go through uh, the exciting week that we've had. We've had some great uh, games launched this week and it couldn't be a better time uh, for doing it. So that's, that's really good. Um, as I say, we've Got, we've had Doom Eternal and Division 2. So today uh, we're going to be looking at some new game announcements that we've had. I know. Well, we, we've been looking at Italy. We've been looking at Spain. It's been coming. But they just... Uh, Rigor, it's been coming here. Say hello, chat. Say hello to everybody because this is how we're going to be socialising for the near future. Uh, this and that... That's it. Anyway, let's let's focus. Let's focus on the on the show. Let's focus on the land of Stadia. Uh, we're going to be talking about some new game announcements that have been out. Uh, some releases coming very soon. The releases keep coming. Got another two this week. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And uh, he says, "What else?" Of course. And then I'll talk about. Um, this week's big releases, of course. What games have you playing? Let me know. Uh, anybody been playing Division 2, Doom Eternal? I expect it. And, of course, the other great game that I've been playing this week, uh, which is much overlooked, and I'll come to that later, but there's been a few tweets and clues about it, and very amusing it is as well. Um, and then we're going to be... So we'll look at what we've all been playing, Um and some thoughts on those and where we feel Stadia is at the moment. And then GDC. So we'll be talking about, Regal, we're going to be talking about GDC and some keynotes. I've not watched all of them. I've watched a couple and there's some interesting bits in there that I've sort of wrinkled out, winkled out like a winkle out the shell. Um, and we're going to be talking about that because there's some really exciting things. Uh, a, that, that Stadia are kind of repeating on their plans, but also just maybe highlight a few a few things down the line that, that may be coming. So those are the things we're going to be looking at. So without further ado, let's crack on. Uh, I hope, uh, as I say, you've been indulging yourself in the various games. This week was announced, of course, Stacks on Stacks which we've sort of had a few sort of indie games for a while. And then we've had those two big launches, the uh, Division 2 and Doom Eternal, of course, perhaps the sort of biggest launches we've had on Stadia for a while. And then another 
uh, indie announcement. And I'll come to the sort of indie things because there were some things mentioned in GDC uh, this evening, uh, which are quite interesting in terms of indie games. So Stacks on Stacks, that looks an interesting game. I'm not, I'm not quite convinced about whether I'd enjoy it. Some of it looks a bit basic, but I think if, as long as they make it kind of fun, anybody looking forward to Stacks on Stacks? Uh, it's complete antidote to your sort of Doom, Doom Eternal uh, and, and your Division 2. So that'd be interesting. That's coming out on 1st of April, April Fool's. <laughs> Stadia, Stadia's rubbish. Have you seen the games they've got? Stacks on Stacks. What game is that? April Fool's, you're not kidding me. Yeah, I can see it all now. But it looks fun. It looks kind of crazy. And then this week, of course, we've got The Crew 2 coming out uh, on Wednesday. The Crew 2 coming out on Wednesday. Um, I play. I did play a bit of the... I think there was a trial of The Crew 2 on Xbox a while ago. I did try it. I found it a bit difficult <laughs> getting past the first level. We had to get to a certain point in a certain time. And I'm a bit useless at driving. I'll probably be better now after playing loads of grid. Who knows? Um, and then on the 27th, so that is what? Friday? Yeah, right, I think on Friday, Lost Worlds Beyond the Page, which is more my sort of... Um, one of the sorts of games I, I like, the sort of puzzly, platformy type games with a sort of story to it. So that that be thank you, Rigor, thank you. So that that would be quite interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. So those are the big game sort of announcements and things that are coming out this week. Um, let's see what's been going on. Been playing Division Two. David Handley says really great price of the base game. Exactly. If Crew Two is similar price, and I may pick it up as well. Of course, I bet like many people. So let's let's look at these two releases today while while we uh, while we're while while we are at it i'll learn to speak english while we are we'll edit editor edit that out cut it out yeah make me look professional thank you wow forgot what i was going to say now anyway new games so division two like many people i was there oh i went straight to it as soon as you know if somebody on reddit or twi uh, twitter said oh yeah division two is available now and of course I think it had been released, or at least um, released early. All right, Jerome, how are you? Good to see you there. Razor 4. Um, yeah, so it looked like that. It, somebody pressed a button a bit early, and it was at its full price. And I, and I straight away, I was thinking, nah, I can't justify that and Doom Eternal like a week later. So I was a bit disappointed, and considering it's like really cheap on all the other platforms. But of course... At the normal time they release these games, a bit later in the day, Ubisoft sale was announced. And of course, it was in there at a good price. Rude not to. So Division 2. And I must admit, I've, I'm absolutely loving Division 2. I think it, it's it's really my kind of game. It's a sort of... Yeah, that sort of... I can't even third person shooter now. Anyway, but the point... What I like about it is it's easy to follow although there's lots of things to do and lots of you know you don't get lost that much because you have this big yellow arrow pointing where to go and I, or, or once you've done a little bit a little flashing square saying over here over here nice and easy i like that it's not too complicated and the and the and it plays really well it looks great it plays really well. I love the, the characterizations of the sort of enemies you meet. I mean, after playing Destiny, you're playing weird, you know, aliens. But they've really characterized the, um, you know, the hyenas and the, and the gangsters that you sort of meet in Division 2. Um, and, you know, I like the way that they sort of, what one of the characters, I mean, it's a repeat animation, but they sort of come out and they're, they're all gangster-like and they've got their AK-47 up like that and they're kind of, walking to you with a swagger and going blap 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 you know and it's sort of really cool it's really well done definitely i'd love to get some uh division two going as a you know crew i played it once with somebody i answered somebody's uh call they're such a cool feature the way that works like agent agent requiring assistance um it's it's such a clever mechanism i think and so i've really enjoyed playing division two um 
and I play it. I've played it quite a lot. And of course, Doom Eternal, everybody's been going about Doom Eternal. Of course they have. And I must admit, I've spent, I tend not to spend a lot of game on video, a lot of money on video games because I have, um, hey, Victor, how you doing there? I have a lot of, you know, I have Games Pass on the Xbox. And before that, I used to go to game and get secondhand games when I had consoles back in the day. I was all right, old cheapskate. I was never one to go and, you know, splurge 60 quid, 50 quid on a brand new game. Very rarely. I remember buying the GameCube for the Zelda game. That was that was why I bought That's the biggest expense, I remember. Like, I bought the, the console for the game. It was unbelievable. It was a special platinum edition GameCube. Beautiful looking thing it was, just for the Zelda game back in the day. But apart from that, I never really splurged big on games. But... Doom Eternal, I thought, yeah, I've got to. Um, so I did. I bought I bought Doom Eternal, of course. That was my main expense that I'd planned for this week. But given the situation we're in, things have got pretty dire here in this country and generally in this world. And, of course, that meant that, unfortunately, well, I had to buy Just Dance 2020. I'm sorry had to be done i could see my daughter was going to go without exercise eon one that looks very complicated i'll have to check that juicer when you say it outputs some rendered frames okay very complicated good to know that uh eon one thank you but yeah so i bought just dance 2020 as an excuse to get my uh, daughter exercising while everybody's off school. She loves it. Secretly, I like it as well. Um, and just, uh, I just want to share a little something here. Yep. You'll notice who is Dancer of the Week. <sighs> yeah, I've signed up, Joe. We, we had, my son was doing a, uh, Joe, I saw the Joe Wicks offering P, being the P teacher to the nation. And uh, my son was reluctantly doing it this morning. Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, I've done a few, uh, I've done a few dances on Just Dance. It works really well, I have to say. Um, you use your, you, this, you put your, put your controller down and uh, you use the app. Uh, the Just Dance app as the controller, hold it in your hand, and then you sort of <laughs> make a box, a big box, small box, all that kind of stuff, doing all the dance, holding it in your hand, and it's it's using it to register when you hit. And interesting enough, I was thinking that people talk about, oh, you know, latency and lag, or, or you know, and, and we all know how there basically isn't any with Stadia, and that's the marvellous thing. And people go, oh, yeah, but in a fighting game or in a in a fast first person shooter well i'd say you know connecting a syncopating with your, with a dance routine with your mobile phone with the visuals that's going on it has to be um you know real minimal latency to have that that impact and just dance works amazing and if you my son wanted to join in, so I said to my kids, why don't you do a duo and you can do a co-op in Just Dance as well. And you basically just basically log in with two separate phones. One holds one, one holds the other. You choose the character you want to be and off you go. And it's a great way. It's a just, if you've got kids, I just think it's a great way to get them to keep fit during lockdown or while there's no school or whatever, if they're feeling reluctant. You know, there's that kind of challenge to better yourself and no, look, there. Look, Lord Kenzel, Dancer of the Week. Lord Kenzel, Dancer of the Week. Yeah, confession time. That's my daughter using my account. It's not me. Of course it's not me. Don't be really ridiculous. I'm an old man. Although, you know, I strutted myself to Blackpink. So, uh, you know. Anyway, Just Dance. Great fun, actually. I'd never thought myself buying it, but needs must when we're on lockdown anyway so the other great big uh things let's just go back to that um 
Doom Eternal. Okay, so here are my thoughts on Doom Eternal. First and foremost, oh my god, the game looks amazing. Did we think... Did we think anything different? Um, no. And in a way, I was thinking this whole idea of, you know, four, true 4K, native 4K, upscaled from 1800 to 21, you know, it, it doesn't matter. That's how I feel. It doesn't matter anymore. It's there on the screen. You see it. It looks amazing. And it plays amazing. It's like you're on ice. I've never known a first person shooter so smooth. It's like you're on rails or something, you know, and, and it takes a bit of getting used to, I must admit, because it's not like a standard first person shooter. It is an arcade game. It's a full on, whatever you do, don't stop moving. And if you've been playing like hours and hours of D Division 2, where like it's built in that you hide behind a wall and then shoot and then hide behind a wall. And then you've got that kind of style and mentality in your head. And then you go, oh, I'll have a bit of Doom Eternal. Oh, no, I'll just hide. But no, no hiding. No standing still. It's go, 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 go. And it just, even when you jump up the wall and then you climb up the wall, if other games could get that kind of speed and momentum, I mean, it's just so smooth and it looks amazing. But the only caveat is, it. I think it's quite hard. I have put it on the sort of the second level like the normal level oh jerome doom eternal is is another level above doom 2016 um but it's just it takes a bit of getting used to i might have to drop it down a level for a while because i'm already stuck on about i've not got that far in and i'm already struggling a bit it's just so and you have to learn to be strategic keep you know make sort of how you kill when you do your glory kills to get up the health and all that um yeah it's interesting i see i play on controller and i'm wondering whether it's better on keyboard and mouse i don't know chat who's played doom eternal on keyboard and mouse um because it's quite on the old controller it's quite hard to control i, could, I know i could change the settings but i always sort of like to think a game should be set well uh, I'm not a fiddler of the of the of the switches and the and the knobs and the dials, as it were, in a game. I, I think it should be. A, 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 I like to think I'm an average gamer, and a game should be set almost at my level. So I never change the the setting, you know, the 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 degree of the game to like hard or easy. I always keep it at the normal average level, uh, and I think. I, it, it, that gives me the right sort of level of enjoyment. I'm not a hardcore gamer that I can twist everything up high. So, and the music, yeah, it's, it's, and what I like about it is it is it, the load time. When you sort of fail in a level or you fail and you die, you're back in within seconds, which is what a good arcade game is all about. You just want to boom. You don't want to feel that disappointment. Oh, I died again. And then you're waiting around. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It's like, boom, you're back in doing it again doing it again anyway so uh i love doom eternal but i'm struggling a bit i will change the levels but chat let me know what you think um if if you played doom eternal or anything like that and any other game so of course ubisoft sale and there's been some great um stuff on the ubisoft sale are there any recommendations that people have seen on the um ubisoft sale i, I saw the assassin's creed um i think it's my sort of game i'm a big tomb raider style thing um so it looks like you know but i thought i'd say what with just dance doom eternal division i've spent more on games in the last week and a half than i've spent in years which is testament to um stadia to be honest i think doom 2 so Doom 2, what I'm saying. Doom Eternal and Division 2 are have gone a long, long way of demonstrating how good Stadia is. Both of those games are a great example of how good Stadia is. And I have noticed, actually, especially since the launch of Doom, a distinct lack of anti-Stadia content out there recently. 
this whole issue, as I said earlier, this whole issue of true 4K over 4K around Doom Eternal has gone away as the game looks great and it just plays amazing. So I just think that's quite interesting. And we're just going to get more and more of that. It's absolutely validated Stadia. Both of the, both of the games, I'd say. The fact that you have cross-play, so you've got a populated world in Division 2. The fact that Doom Eternal just goes at such a speed. They always said that they, it, as a proof of concept of Stadia working was, was Doom Eternal. The id, t the ID software team and Google would have been working together as, and they used Doom 2016 as an example to set to show that the concept of cloud gaming works and the f every week you butt in Google right yeah and now the finished Doom Eternal is has been launched it's it absolutely demonstrates how good Stadia is and uh, and anybody who um, the, I think few can have complaints about it the only way you're going to play this better is with a post that a plus uh, over a thousand pound computer I don't care what people say oh, I could build you one cheaper than no I saw an advert from overclockers and they were doing a doom special computer and yeah it was like 800 quid but it said, hey, you could play Doom at 1080p or upgrade it even more. And I thought, exactly. Even an 800 quid computer can only play Doom Eternal at 1080p effectively. So Stadia is one of the best experiences you're going to get, especially combined with the loading times. So let me know what you think. Who's played Doom Eternal? Uh, who's enjoying it? Who's not enjoying it? It's all right. Um... And Division 2, thoughts, chat. And let me know what you, you thought. Fini I've not finished, Jerome, I've not finished Dig 2. I've got that stage where we've got so many games coming out that I'm, I'm almost like, if I'm, if I'm struggling in one game, I'm like, okay, I'll put that to one side, moving to the next. Which is a, a testament to... Um, testament to the, the games library that we've got. You, such variety now. And it's just coming and coming and coming. Yes, it has. Um, uh, it's not Stadia Connect. What's it called? On Division 2, it does have a feature where you can see what your team makes. Exclusive to Stadia, of course. Because you can't do it on other platforms. Um, it does. E exactly. Digital Foundry have tested Doom Eternal. But they've not done their stadia test. Exactly. I'd love them to do it. Everybody seems to quote Digital Foundry, and with respect, they you know they're proper forensic. If you really if you know you're bothered about that, they do a proper forensic analysis. But yeah, they've just looked at. The, I, I've not looked at it in too much detail, but I, but they've not done a stadia version. They've just looked at the the, the sort of general PC version, I think. I'm not drinking myself into the stup a stupor, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. This is, I'm a gamer, so this is a gamer drink. Marketing people, eh? It's an energy drink aimed at gamers. Cheers. I've got a stack of it in the fridge. Mmm. Anyway, loads of great games such variety and it's just we're just going to get more and more and i'm going to come to some exciting announcements which we i think are coming very very soon uh that were hinted at in the google gamers uh development conference what i just wanted to touch on and i don't know whether you've seen it in the news is that netflix and other similar um heavy broadband users as it were are reducing the quality of their stream um, as the network is slightly overburdened by everybody being at home and wanting to stream Netflix and other things all at the time so Netflix are reducing their 4k stream for a while to help with the burden on the network so what does this mean for Stadia 
uh, thoughts, chat. Do you think Stadia is going to, you know, because that obviously it's key for Stadia that they keep the, you know, we know that it consumes a lot of bandwidth. We know that in order to deliver the amazing quality and uh, latency free game experience that we all, you know, have come to love. So it would be a nightmare if um, if they did. But I, I don't think Stadia's, oddly enough, ironically enough, I don't think Stadia, my view, so here's my view on whether, on the in the face of Netflix, and I think YouTube as well, are reducing the quality of their stream during this sort of, this sort of global lockdown so as to not overburden the networks. Uh, I think Stadia's, ironically enough, I think Stadia's too small to have any serious effect compared to, compared to, an, um, yeah, compared to, um, uh, Netflix globally yeah I, I think in the UK that's what they're saying uh, BT and others are saying that we can we can get it exactly that's the thing that's what I'm saying you're quite right Rigor I d so my personal opinion is I don't think it's going to have any effect on Stadia because it them reducing it will have a minimum effect because it's you know whereas you say Netflix they're thirteen percent of the whole internet which is crazy you think about it so them reducing it has a massive effect whereas it's all incremental isn't it a Stadia reducing will have a minimal effect so there's no point and it keeps us all happy playing games but I, it was just an interesting you know thought but as I say I don't think Stadia is at that stage if Stadia had the two billion gamers or whatever it is they're aiming for then yeah. Um, of course, that's to come down the line, isn't it? Yeah, I think even... I was playing Division 2 on my gaming monitor here from my laptop, and it's 1080p. But sitting this close, I'm, I'm literally, you know, sitting two feet away from it, it looks amazing. Whereas on the TV, because I'm sitting the other side of the room, even though it's in 4K, I have to squint at the, all the tiny writing like an old man so yeah it looks you know the point is the game as long as the game looks at anything like 1080p as long as it plays smoothly is 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 super cool in my view anyway that's just some thoughts there so what i wanted to touch on here is um some interesting updates from Google Developer. Uh, so Google were planned to be at the Google Developers Conference and give some keynote speech, and of course it was at the Google Deve at the at the Gamers Developer Conference last year that they n made their big announcement and the words they use about their um, aspirations for Stadia, which I think is interesting when we look back in history about what Google announced of what they're aiming to do as opposed to what they're going to do on November the 19th, 2019. But that's, it's, it's history now. But I think when you look back at the speeches they made and stuff, it wasn't saying we're going to deliver all of this on November the 19th. Unfortunately, the world walked away thinking, oh my God, Stadia is going to launch and on November 19th, we'll have all this amazing stuff. It's not the way Google works. You know, and, and you'll see in there a year ago, if you look at the announcement, it's all about imagine going from this going from this screen to that screen imagine being able to do that this is what we're all planning to do anyway enough of that so the games developer conference for those that don't want uh know is specifically aimed at games developers and consists of a series of talks keynote speeches about some about some really technical stuff about game developer game developing developing on certain platforms and stuff like that and so the Google keynote speech and various um, sessions that Google were planning to do there were specifically aimed at game developers maybe wanting to, why they should work on Stadia games, how Stadia can help them using the Google Cloud, using the Google infrastructure, not just Stadia, but Android games, everything. Um, so the those first few keynote speeches were today and so I just picked out a few interesting things that uh, I thought I'd share with you um, and we're going to start here with this so this is oh gosh 
Erin. Erin Hoffman John. Erin Hoffman John is, of course, the creative um, head of research and development at Stadia. Now, I've put a picture up here. Uh, yeah, the speech wasn't uh, amazingly exciting, but it's very techy and aimed specifically. At, it's not a big marketing exercise. But all I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, is take a look at her shirt. And tell me what you see on her shirt. The prize, to anybody who can tell me the significance of her shirt. Correct. Why would she choose to wear in a live keynote speech an Untitled Goose tribute t-shirt. Do you think that's a... I mean, that's a decision that she's made, isn't it? And the fact that the jacket's open as well. Very... It's like... Is that like an Easter egg of some sort? An egg? A goose egg? Do we think Untitled Goose Game is coming to Stadia? What do you think, chat? I've played it on Xbox. It's a great fun game. And, and it's ironically enough, it's one of those sort of indie games that we're beginning to see come to Google that, that I think would sit really well on Stadia. Just a sort of fun, puzzly game. Very funny. So anyway, that's I just thought I'd... I'd Highlight that, and I, I noticed, I'm not the only one I saw, the, I forget who it was, uh, not Stadia Cast, uh, Stadia Connect, Stadia, anyway, somebody else also spotted it, so I'm not unique in it, I'm not claiming it, but it's just, I, straight away I saw the shirt, and I had the same thought as many people, Untitled Goose Game, is it coming to Stadia? Anyway, on the more technical stuff, um... It's a very mischievous game, David. That's why people, kids love it as well. But it's also, you have to sort of think about it. It's got a nice sort of logic to it and platforming, as well as being very funny. Before the Stadia bit, uh, in the uh, speeches that they made, before Erin came on and started talking, um, there was some guy, and I forget his name, and I apologise, some guy, I'm not dismissing him. Anyway, talking about the Google Cloud infrastructure, uh, and in there, again, it was very dry, but uh, there were some interesting bits. Um, so one of the things that Google are doing, the Google Cloud infrastructure, um, is that they are expanding their core gaming data centers across the world. Now, the more sort of data centers they have, the closer it is to your house, then that just improves latency and any kind of lag. The closer you are to the data centers, that latency is, lag is reduced. And they are now, this technology basically makes latency on Stadia possible. So this is the these are the data centers that make it possible for us to have next to no latency. And they are building new ones in Melbourne. So Australia, who, you know, hey, what are they called now? Those annoying Australian YouTubers who were dissing Stadia. Anyway, you won't be dissing it when it comes to it comes to your house, mate. It's coming to Melbourne, uh, Jakarta, Las Vegas, and Delhi. And of course, the Indian market is a massive, massive mobile phone gaming market. When you see the statistics on Android games, you can see why Google are going for this sort of two billion players or whatever it is around the world so i just thought it was interesting that they're putting in these extra uh, data centers around the world and the other thing they mentioned i didn't realize is that google has its own private fiber network that connects all the data centers so they don't use the existing network they use their own private network and they keep the data flowing through that until the last minute they have to then release it out into the wild to your 
local broadband center and then to your house and that way again they're in control of it they're in control of the speed to make sure wherever they are in the world it stays within the google fiber network and then splurts out to the various sort of broadband center network center and then to your house and i didn't realize that and that's sort of part of the the sort of the power that google has that may, that allows stadia to minimize that that latency issue and the other thing of course if you're a games developer is you're not you're not developing on physical machines that are sitting at your desk when you develop a console you have to get those special um developer console kits they used to cost a fortune if you're a game developer with stadia you don't need the kits you're developing in the same way that we're getting the games sent to us um, via the cloud, you're developing, as I understand it, they're developing the game in the cloud. So that means that your developer team can be in Australia or Poland. I think they mentioned Kine or something was similar to how they developed it. And you're basically working on the same game that's in the cloud wherever you are in the world. So if you've a multi-studio developer, stages are a blessing for you. Brian, if game like Spitlin's made it on stage, then Brawl Star should be. Could be. Could be. The other thing he mentioned is that he was talking about the power of the Google data centers and how many people use it and utilize it to really, especially for multiplayer games. And one of the games that he quoted that uses the Google Cloud infrastructure to power their game because it can deliver fast response times was Apex Legends. Now, they may just be demonstrating, they were using that as an example, but the fact that Apex Legends already using their Google Cloud infrastructure means that if they did, if EA ever got round to doing a port of some sort for um, Apex Legends, they know the infrastructure would work. Ah, uh, yeah, David, exactly. EA had some, it's about time EA, and I think they will. E, the EA when they flashed up the developers that they're working with. Erin, I'll come to Erin uh, Hoffman. John said, but she quoted that 120 games. In fact, she said 120 plus games. Um, so we know that the rate of release already. You know, already we're getting two or three a week at this rate is going to increase um, over the, the following year. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting that they used Apex Legends as an example of the ability to use the cloud, also the matchmaking as well. Um, so this techno Google Cloud technology has really been used for infrastructure for multiplayer games like Apex Legends, for matchmaking, um, and they've developed something in conjunction with Unity, of course, creators of Unity engine, the Unity engine lo uh, logo is often you see it all the front of, it's one of the main uh, game developing platforms. And you often see it at the beginning of uh, games, you know, developed on Unity, whatever. They've uh, done a sort of co a collab with Google for something called Open Match, which is a matchmaking uh, functionality which is available for and is used uh, and by many apparently lots of AAA games so not just on uh, Stadia of course and the other thing is that the Google Cloud supports all platforms that was what they're trying to get across it's not just like a Stadia thing it supports PC Xbox and you know PlayStation and of course we know that they've done a massive deal with Activision and Blizzard uh, who are going to be using the Google Cloud. Now, we know, I know that doesn't necessarily mean that Activision Blizzard Games is all suddenly going to appear on Stadia, but I feel slightly more now, I'm leaning more towards the fact that that might be the case because the Activision Blizzard using Google Cloud will demonstrate to them the power of Google's cloud and infrastructure. And then for there, it's a short hop and a jump to actually saying, let's port our games to Stadia. So that was just interesting more about the um, 
They did, David. They did mention something about Azure. Yeah, so they it works. So that they're talking about their developer tools. So that, so Erin Hoffman John talked a lot about the specific development tools, and they've tried to make sure that the Stadia development tools work with other third party game development tools like Unity, like uh, like the match open match thing I was talking about, the matchmaking fun functionality. And then there was another one, I, call, I think it was called Devox, which is for text and speech chat in game. And these are general tools that all developers use. And what Google Stadia team have done is make sure that the the tools are compatible with Stadia. So if you're a developer and you're used to using certain tools, it's easy to develop for Stadia because you know that you know the tools that you normally use integrate with Stadia. So I mean that's that that's that main thing. And and one of those things was there's an Azure, I think it measures statistics using the Microsoft Azure cloud thing. It's a, an app within that that measures data or statistics or something like that but it's compatible with the stadia platform so the stadia platform talks to it which is interesting because it's a microsoft thing um so i thought that was quite interesting and then the other thing that um she talked about here you got it here. okay i'm going to put this up here because this will remind me so here is um, Stadia Games and Entertainment and Splash Damage, which is a London-based games developer, um, are working on what is effectively the, the first Stadia exclusive title. Well, when I say Stadia exclusive title, because people are like, Clive, what about Guilt? Yeah, I don't think Guilt was originally developed necessarily with Stadia in mind. I think they were already developing the game and then Stadia came along and said, we'll We'll pay you to finish it and we'll have it exclusively for a period of time. So it became the Stadia exclusive. But it never utilized any of the power um, that Stadia, that's developing for the Stadia platform can offer. Splash Damage and Stadia have joined forces and are working together. So Stadia uh, Games and Entertainment is effectively the studio. The main, but they actually, but they've hired in Splash Damage, and I must check what games Splash Damage have done before. But anyway, the point is to work together to produce the first developed for Stadia Stadia exclusive game. So, i.e., a game that is unlikely, therefore, to be on any other platform. And uh, Erin Hoffman John said that they will be making an announcement shortly about what it is they're working on. So I think that's really exciting because we're going to start, this will be the first time we see a real glimpse, perhaps, or get a hint of what, they, of what they're up to and what a Stadia exclusive game might look like. So let me know what you think in the chat. You know, is this something that excites you? Should we have a quick look live on... Um, who are they? Splash damage. See what they've done. I should have looked this up. I will do it for you, ladies and gentlemen. Games. So I say a London based. Made by gamers. Gear Tastics. Okay, so Gear Tastics is a fast paced turn based strategy game. That's not very exciting. Halo MCC. Okay. Did they convert? Did they do the Halo conversion? What? Gears 5? I'm confused now. Why have they got Gears 4? Do they do ports? They came in late. Okay, that's interesting. People first. We love a good challenge. We're born from competitive online games and we've carried that spirit. From three friends coding in a bedroom, we're now more than 300 friends creating genre-leading AAA experiences. Various awards they've won. Our history. 
Gear Tactics, Halo MCC. I think that Gears 5, Play Dirty, Gears 4, okay, Gears Tactics, okay, that's a 2020 game, so Splash Damage, Fast Pay, oh, it's a turn-based, oh, developed by, Co okay, that's what I thought the Coalition did, Gears 5. Okay, so this is developed by the Coalition and Splash Damage. And it's a fast-paced, turn-based strategy game. Okay. But anyway, so they're working with... Uh, so they've got some pedigree. There's no doubt about that. And they've been hired in to work in conjunction with the Stadia Games and Entertainment. So it's a proper Stadia-produced game. As a developer, you can sort of do things entirely in-house or you can hire a developer to do things for you but working with your producers. So this is what they're doing in this situation. So that would be very interesting. The other thing, is so that splash damage. So the other thing they talked about, why is that so small? Anyway, I don't think you can see that. Right, what I should have put that logo bigger, I apologize. What that says is Stadia Maker. So, what they're doing, so what Google uh, Stadia is doing is that they are setting up a facility for independence to self-publish. So, I think that's really exciting. We've, we've seen that Stadia have developed, um, have really supported the indie sort of market quite a lot you know they and so now with stadium maker this is going to allow game developers independent game developers to self publish so if you're a an independent game developer with a bit with a pedigree you can you can self publish you now there is some criteria there resurrector you've got to understand the latest version of unity 13.9 or whatever it is and have published at least one game or something like that but um, they'll give you the support the tools, maybe a bit of money, um, and allow you to self-publish. She talked about how there was a limit to the number of uh, indie developers they could work with at the beginning. And they've sort of got those games now coming either on the platform or coming to the platform. And now they're expanding it to allow indies to self-publish. So isn't that a bit like, didn't Xbox have a whole thing where they had um, promoted indie games? or encouraged indie developers to develop for the Xbox. So um, I think we're going to see, there's just going to be more and more games of different. We can have the big AAA games, and then we're going to have loads of really interesting, imaginative um, indie games that, that really utilize the capabilities of uh, the Stadia platform. So I think that's you know, really quite kind of interesting. So, that, you know, overall, sorry about the tiny logo there. It's called Stadia Maker. Um, I think they were the main highlights for me from the, the platform. The one thing that she did say, I just, uh, as I say, I repeated it earlier, but Erin Hoffman, John, she said that she the 120 plus games coming to Stadia this year. So she repeated that 120 plus games coming to Stadia this year. And then she talked about, interestingly enough, there have been 60 plus individual game updates and patches since launch. But the beauty, if you develop a game for Stadia is, Stadia players get instant access and there's no waiting times. And she just highlighted that point. And I thought that's very interesting. If you add up all the amount of time say console players or anything would have had to wait for patches 60 plus individual game patches across all the titles since launch and there's been no wait times for any of us and i think that's pretty pretty cool and i was talking about you know doom or division 2 the loading times are great i play sea of thieves a lot and i played it this weekend because on xbox because my son wanted to play and i i'm a big sea of thieves fan legend of course and um but I forgot about the loading times. Oh, it takes so long to load in the game. 
to start the game up. And I'm getting to that point where I take Stadia for granted and it's instant um, loading time. Anyway, there are more uh, things going on at the uh, and more keynote speeches that I'll be watching uh, about Stadia from the Stadia team and various um, aspects. But I think there's lots of exciting clues about what's coming up, what's in there and what's coming very soon. And they did talk about Oh, what's it? It's not Stadia Connect, but uh, the whole kind of being able to sort of click on a link and then join the game almost instantly. They talked about that and they talked about, she talked about that coming out this year as well. So we weren't expecting any major announcements at uh, the sort of GDC thing from Stadia, but I was expecting a few little clues about things sort of um, happening. Yeah, the four minutes to play. That's what she said. From basically buying a game to playing a game takes approximately four minutes. Which is marvellous, uh, incredible. Uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me when you go, oh, buy that game, and then you're playing it straight away. That's such a sort of... I'm going to put my big face there. That's such a sort of amazing thing that I, I'm so used to now you know you, I've, I've got kids and they're impatient and so when I said to my daughter should I get you just dance 2020 oh I, I used to love that on the Wii so I'll get you it now bye there you are off you go playing it straight away it's crazy four minutes to make a new account yay but it is impre impressive nine seconds for the ones that already have a Stadia account to start playing it's incredible. Yeah, less friction the better. I remember in game develop development um, when I was working at, uh, I worked at Lego in the game development side and we had X, and my manager at the time was an ex-EA guy and he was all about you should get into the game like within four buttons almost. Push, push, push. You shouldn't have lots of screens and then just like get in. Easy. A, 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 or whatever it is, X, 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 and you're in the game. No more than four buttons, and you should be in playing the game. And it is, it's that resurrection. It's that the friction-free, the better to playing a game. It gives you a much better experience. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's it. I mean, as I say, um, keep playing the games. Stay healthy. Watch the... Uh, game is the GDC the Stadia GDC stuff some of it's really dry but in if you listen you know I whizzed through it and then I just made some notes some keynotes about some interest I thought oh that's interesting uh, things that might be coming very soon hints of announcements etc it's all very exciting um, what was on in the screen behind them when they go the publishers they're working with Konami I saw Dance Dance Revolution don't think that'll come I used to love that in the arcade. Dance Dance Revolution. Oh dear. It's the kill it. It's the kill it. Um But Konami was on there, EA was on there, and um two K games, we know that already. Rockstar, we know that already. Uh but just some interesting it's these little little Easter eggs that are in there, not Easter eggs, but you know, little clues to what, what's coming. No Capcom, no. Yet. I did see that. I was thinking, you know, that. But very interesting. I should have taken a still of the of the screen behind them. I'll, maybe I'll do that if there's any more interesting things. But that's it, guys, for today. I think I, I've rambled on a lot as ever, but I just thought I would uh, share some interesting things that I thought are worth looking at, worth discussing. I appreciate everybody who's in the chat today coming along uh you know sometimes you, you get a bit disgruntled doing these things but as i said my friend keep doing it keep doing it um people seem to catch up later let me know i might start i might do a 10 p.m uh greenwich mean time so that'd be a 5 p.m est uh just a bit early for everybody else and also for my own sanity because drinking an energy drink uh, at midnight it didn't really matter in lockdown but generally is not the 
the greatest, greatest uh, idea. But I need it to fill up and crazy. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending your time. I know it's uh, valuable. I really appreciate the people that have come here. Have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And you can't leave the house. So just play games and chat to people on the party chat. And until uh, till then, thank you once tonight. Farewell, my friends. <laughs>